What's the best time of day to eat? Should you skip meals? Should you fast? Should you eat late at night? Eat early in the morning? There's a lot of confusion around when the best time to eat is. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna bring this back to a physiological level. How does your body operate and what's an ideal pattern to optimize the way that your body functions? Hi guys, I'm Dr. Arlen Hill and today we're gonna take a look at a concept called chrononutrition. Chrono meaning time and then looking at how to optimize time and nutrition so that we can ultimately optimize you. Now, to, to start this conversation, one of the things that we want to recognize is that if we look outside, it's very easy to acknowledge that there is a light and there is a dark cycle. We see daylight and we see the sun go down in the evening and we have nighttime and there's this consistent rhythmical pattern day in and day out. And we also acknowledge that we as humans have rhythmical patterns that should mimic this. For example, we go to bed when the sun starts to go down or shortly thereafter and when the sun's up we wake up and so we see that there's this normal natural rhythm that should be taking place and that ultimately means that we are connected to our environment around us and we should acknowledge that now what does that mean in terms of talking about food intake and when the optimal time of food intake is well if we look at our activity, and meaning the, our metabolic activity, our metabolic activity logically increases when we wake up after we've been in a period of rest and as we go throughout our day, it begins to slowly decline, but certainly once we get into the evening hours, we see that our metabolic rate goes down. Now, question for you. Would we want to take in a lot of food at the same time that our metabolic rate is going down? And quite logically, the answer to that is no, that's a mismatch. Now, here's something I wanna share with you to make a few connections on this. So first, what we wanna talk about is looking at timed eating. And I'm going to delve more into detail around this, but ultimately what we're looking at is talking about a window of time. Now, you may think in regards to, if you've heard things like this, some folks talk about fasting, and uh, this is not gonna be a conversation about fasting. That, that has a time and a place, but that's not for our conversation today. The next thing we're gonna look at here is your metabolic health. Now, what does metabolic health mean? Well, metabolic health is ultimately the overall functionality of the body. And so, for example, when we talk about the hormones, hormones are a part of your metabolism. When we start to talk about your nervous system and the various chemicals that are produced by your nervous system, that's metabolic health. Uh, if we look at your, uh, for example, your gastrointestinal tract, your gastrointestinal tract can be a huge governor over your overall metabolism. Um, so there's quite a few things here, but again, just to reiterate these, some of the high level on these, the gut, the hormones, the sleep, the nervous system, those are ones that we often think about with this. Now, up in the, um, the other part of this that I'm gonna show you here is going to be your circadian, uh, we'll change that, there'll be your circadian rhythm. And this is your light dark cycle, all right? This is where I started our conversation at today. But we have to make sure that we stay in tune with this light dark cycle. And that means that if we want to optimize our overall metabolic function, so it doesn't matter what aspect of your metabolic function you're trying to improve. Are you trying to lose weight? Are you trying to gain muscle? Are you trying to um, reduce your cardiovascular risk? Are you trying to improve your glucose numbers? Any aspect of metabolic health is ultimately going to be influenced by your circadian rhythm and the timing of the eating. And the reason that that is the case is because these two are going to be intimately related with each other. So when we look at time of eating throughout the day, what does that mean in regards to the time of day that you should be eating? Well, your timing of food intake should match your body's normal circadian rhythm. And that may be an interesting starting point for some because 
you may need to first work on adjusting your circadian rhythm and just changing your overall habits of when you get up, when you go to bed, how do you set yourself up to go to sleep at night, are you staying asleep through the night? These are all individual questions that need to be asked. But here's something interesting. If you struggle with your circadian rhythm and not waking up at, a, at an ideal time it's close to when the sun's coming up and going to bed around when the sun's going down. Again, these are generalizations, but they should be good benchmarks to shoot for, and they do change throughout the year. But if you're having trouble with your circadian rhythm, one of the things that you can do is actually start to time your food intake in adequate times throughout the day. Guys, it is no coincidence that we talk about a three main meals, a breakfast in the morning, lunch around midday, and then dinner. And generally, the total consumption of food should decline or our major caloric intake should decline as we go throughout the day. Now, that doesn't have to be drastic declines, but the ideology here is that as our natural rhythm of energy and metabolic output declines throughout the day, we want to match that. So what does this ultimately mean? What are some of the attributes behind developing this pattern of eating and eating with this mindset? Well, there's a couple of things in this, and one is that if we don't eat in this rhythm, so for example, if you're skipping breakfast or eating late at night, then this is ultimately going to disrupt this metabolic health. And when we see that this happens, when you lengthen the overall time that you're consuming food throughout the day, one of the things that happens is that increases the onset of chronic disease. Clearly not a pattern we want to get into. How does it ultimately do that though? Well, by changing the way that we handle our lipids by influencing how we manage our glucose and utilize our glucose and even changing our insulin sensitivity, how the glucose and insulin interface with each other and then ultimately get into the cell. Does the cell respond to insulin when insulin shows up at the insulin receptor to ultimately signal glucose to come into the cell? If that doesn't all take place adequately, one of the things you need to go back and check is, well, what does my circadian rhythm look like and when am I predominantly eating food? So those are a couple of things. Your overall energy expenditure, if you're eating a lot of your calories later in the day, then your, your metabolism after you eat, how you utilize those calories after a meal is going to decline. We want to put those calories that you're taking in to use. You're not just randomly eating, and if you are, you shouldn't be. You should have a focus and an intent with your food consumption, and ultimately, what is that food going to do besides just create, stop some cravings or address your hunger that you have at that moment? There needs to be an intention behind the food that you're consuming in. So we want to think about that. Now, I mentioned that metabolic health also includes the gut, the bacteria in the gut, which we clearly hear so much about. Interestingly enough on this, the gut bacteria are very perceptive to the environment around us, whether that's changes in temperature, changes in light dark cycle. In fact, when we look at the general profile for the microbiota during the day versus at night, they are slightly different, but that's a, that is just a byproduct and an example of the changes in the metabolic activity that occurred during the day versus during the night. And so we want to make sure that we keep those on par with each other. Something else is that we acknowledge that stress is a major factor in everybody's life. And we want to try to offset the negative effects of stress as much as we can. And when stress of any form is being laid upon our body, it's being, we're being challenged by that stress, ultimately we have to manage that through what's known as our HPA axis, our hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. And this hypothalamic region, which is where a lot of this starts at, that is also what perceives our light dark cycle. And so we see that we have this hypothalamic region up here in the brain, we have a pituitary, these are all deep in the center of the brain, and then those have to efficiently communicate with our adrenal glands, which we typically think about and generically think of as our stress gland. But the 
The concept around this and the detail of it is much greater, but what is important for you to take away from our conversation is that when you eat late at night, that stimulates this HPA axis. Just like you've been uh, been approached by a wild animal and you're scared and you don't know what to do and you're, you're trying to you're going into your fight or flight mode. Eating late at night puts you into a low level fight or flight mode. Not optimal when we're trying to get into a pattern of improving our circadian rhythm so we can improve our metabolic health. So keep that in mind as you're looking at this. This can also, like I said, this is a, 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 these all play off of each other. So just like when we talk about the timing that can affect our sleep, if you're having trouble sleeping, first thing you need to ask yourself is, are you eating too close to bed? And if you are, you're likely negatively influencing some of the dynamics of how you're managing your metabolism and your glucose insulin interactions. That's important. The two biggest stumbling blocks that I see in regards to uh, someone not being in an optimal pattern here is skipping breakfast, eating too late at night, eating too frequently, and so that can vary depending on what your metabolic output is. If you're a very high intensity athlete, that's going to be your frequency of food consumption is going to be much different than the average individual or say someone who sits behind a desk most of the day. Those two cannot be looked at the same. But skipping breakfast, uh, eating too late at night, eating too often, and then getting into a pattern where you're overdoing it. So what do I mean by that? Well, clearly what we're talking about here is within this bigger context of chrononutrition is time-restricted eating. We want to restrict our eating to the, to the daylight hours. We want to match the outside environment around us, our daylight cycle. And if you're fasting and you're fasting for extended periods of time over, say for example, weeks and months, and you're really taking this to the extreme, that's not ideal either. I see a lot of patients that have taken this too far and as a result of that, they've had a lot of negative effects on their hormones with their hormones trying to continue to balance out their overall metabolic activity. So. You can't do this too much. But in general, this is the overall concept that you want to follow, time-restricted eating within daylight hours. Hey, if you're looking for more information about how to optimize your health and how I support patients, go to DrArlandHill.com. You can find out all about that there. And I look forward to speaking to you real soon in the next video.